guardian angel pointed us in the direction of Reciprocal Studios and Jack and Dino, who, who knows Jonathan Poneman. And Jack and Dino turned Jonathan Poneman on to our tape and he thought it was really groovy. And he gave us a call and we made a single and then we made a record. And now this, we're here today. Nirvana's debut album, Bleach, released on Sub Pop Records, was recorded at Reciprocal Recording in Seattle, Washington in December of 1988 and January of 1989. The album was edited and sequenced already, but Sub Pop head Bruce Pavitt ordered that the album be completely resequenced. The record was further delayed for several months until Sub Pop was able to secure sufficient funds to issue it. And the only thing they were that they did do, Sub Pop made, Bruce Pavitt in particular, made them change the song order. Because they had a song order picked out. I think it was going to start with Floyd the Barber. And uh, Bruce said, no, it's got to start with Blue, the song Blue. So they changed the sequence. Somewhere I have a cassette with the original sequence on it. Um, so Bruce convinced them to, to change the sequence of the songs. And that was pretty much, you know, the only time they listened to Sub Pop about anything. Nirvana had already gone through several drummers by this stage, however, decided to settle with Chad Channing for the recording of Bleach. However, Channing did not drum on all of the songs on Bleach. Three of the album songs, Floyd the Barber, Paper Cuts, and Downer, were recorded during a previous session at Reciprocal Studios in 1988, featuring Dale Crover on drums. The band attempted to re-record them with their new drummer, Chad Channing. However, they ultimately decided to remix the versions recorded with Crover for the final version of Bleach. Working the drum sounds, I mean, we were all thinking about, okay, you know, the idea was to, you know, get a total heavy, uh, heavy sound going. And uh, as uh, me and Chris kind of coined it as a doom pop, <laughs> uh, but uh, the drums were, uh, that was weird for me. I mean, it was, a, it was the first time I'd, you know, spent a long time in the studio recording. Uh, and so doing the drums, um, like the heads we had tuned like really, really low to where like, I mean, it, it was like they were just barely on it seemed. And it was kind of a real pain because, uh, you know, with no flexibility in the heads, I yeah. couldn't get any snap back. Um, it was, and of course, with that, you know, it, it was basically like playing a bunch of cardboard boxes. That's what it felt like. Wow. Really hard to generate power, and of course, without without any, uh, you know, snapback, um, it was hard to generate a really strong sound out of it too. So it was really difficult, and I was actually amazed that the drums came out as good as they did uh, in the end result. <laughs> a second guitarist, Jason Everman, was brought into the band, and although he is credited with playing on the album. In actuality, Everman didn't play a single note on Bleach. However, he did pay the 600 some odd dollars that it cost to record the album. Okay, so you guys were a four piece at one time, right? We were for a few months, but we don't really even like to, um, to let people know that. Because, okay. because we, we weren't the, the exact same band that we were for uh, about a year before Jason got in the band. Jason right. Everman, and a lot of people don't realize or don't know that he didn't he didn't play on the album. Oh, he didn't. We, we put his name on the album to make him feel a part of the band. Okay. And within a few months, we we kicked him out. Bleach is power packed with thirteen heavy rock grunge tracks, with songs that hit you right in the face like Scoff, Big Cheese, and Negative Creep. Track three, About a Girl, the same song that they opened their 93 Unplugged set with, almost seems out of place on this album. It's an album full of dark, thumping, heavy rock, and then you throw in a track like About a Girl with its softer tone and Beatles-like melody. It just shows you that on an album full of darker, heavy tunes, Cobain still had that knack and that ability to write a good melody. We play a very powerful, high-energy, type of rock and roll. We move around on stage a lot and uh, um, just scream <laughs> with an abandon, I guess. Love Buzz was the only single released from Bleach, along with the Blue EP, which was released in December of 1989, containing four tracks, Blue, Love Buzz, Been a Sun, and Stain. When it first came out, Bleach only sold around 40,000 copies. But following the enormous success of the band's second album, Nevermind, fans discovered Nirvana's debut. It has since been certified platinum and has sold around 2 million copies in the United States alone. 
In one of Cobain's first interviews, he stated, When I write a song, the lyrics are the least important thing. I can go through two or three different subjects in a song and the title can mean absolutely nothing at all. Most of the lyrics on the Bleach album are about my life in Aberdeen. In a 1993 interview, Cobain claimed that 80% of the lyrics on Bleach were written the night before recording and that he was often still working on the words on the drive to the recording studio. So here we have your typical American hard rock band setting up for a day's practice. Uh, blew my ears <laughs> out. Huh? Hey, by the way. Hey. The album's working title was Too Many Humans. However, Cobain would later rename the album Bleach from an idea he got from a poster while the band was driving through San Francisco. The album cover was photographed by Cobain's then-girlfriend, Tracy Miranda, during a concert at the Rico Muse Art Gallery in Olympia, Washington. You'll also notice interesting spelling of Kurt Cobain's name on the inside cover. He slots the letter D into his first name and spells Cobain with a K instead of a C. Some say this was Kurt just playing around, it was like his alter ego or whatever. But why put the letter D into his first name? Well, Kurt's middle name is Donald, so it's safe to say he put that initial D from his middle name and just put it into his first name. Well, this, uh, this goes into your guitar. Hey! In 2009, a 20th anniversary edition of Bleach was released. Sub Pop expanded the album with special packaging and a never before released live performance. The 20th anniversary edition has been remastered from the original tapes at Sterling Sound in a session overseen by producer Jack and Dino. The CD edition includes a 48-page booklet, while the 2LP edition offers a 16-page booklet, both of which includes candid photos of the band not previously released to the public. So Bleach was Nirvana's debut. It's a really cool album. It was made on a budget of around $600 as compared to Nevermind and In Utero, which costs like tens of thousands of dollars. So production-wise, you obviously can't compare Bleach to Nirvana's other records. This one's very stripped down, obviously made on a low budget. It doesn't have all those big production values and studio trickery going on. And there wasn't meant to be. Nirvana went in, belted out these songs, recorded them really quick, and it's exactly what they wanted to do. It's the exact album that they wanted to make at that time. But it's a good album. It's dark and it's heavy. And there are some really good songs on there. Some of Nirvana's best, actually. Some standouts on the album for me are songs like Blue, About a Girl, Love Buzz, Negative Creep, Swap Meat, Big Cheese, songs like that. Chad Channing drums great on this album. There's a lot of screaming on this album by Kurt. Very hard to understand a lot of what he's saying. Very hard to make out the lyrics. So Bleach is stripped down, it's raw, it's heavy. There's a lot of good songs on this album. And there's a lot to like here on Bleach. Thanks for tuning in guys, and we will catch you next time. Just keep practicing and don't give up. Just never give up. Play as often as you can and be really dedicated and try to write good music and don't worry about um, the material ethics that go with music. It doesn't matter what you look like or, or anything. It doesn't matter what your product looks like. It's what, what it sounds like.